Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to get an updated version of WetroArch, which allows CPU overclocking. So this is actually really cool. If you guys play PlayStation 1 or N64 games on your Nintendo Switch using WetroArch, and you've noticed a bit of lag or audio lag, this will actually fix that. So the first thing you guys want to do, make sure you have a way of booting into custom firmware, obviously. Go on your Nintendo Switch, hold the power button, wait for the menu to appear here and when it does go to power options and power off so now we have to take out our micro SD card connect this to our PC and I will show you guys what to do next once you're on your computer there will be two links in the description of this video I would recommend getting the latest version of RetroArch so simply once you're on the download tab scroll all the way down and we're looking for switch right here we're not interested in the nsp because um, the overclocked version comes with one but we just want to click on download and download the zip file so the second link in the description it will be a mega link this is actually the overclock version of retroarch um, so you can add the cpu overclocks and get games to run better so all you want to do with this file is simply click on the download button and just give this a few seconds to download so once you've got both of these files, you want to head over to your computer's downloads folder and just find them both in there. Now I also have a ROMs folder. To get this folder, simply right click, create a new folder. And inside I've got two more folders, Game Boy Advance and PlayStation 1. I've got a Game Boy Advance game in here and a PlayStation 1 game in here. I chose Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter. Before when I played this, it had some sound issues, the gameplay was a bit laggy. So we are going to try max performance on our CPU and see if we can get this game to actually run like it would on a real PlayStation. So yeah, I've got this ROM. Now it's entirely up to you where you get your games from. Um, this does also work with Nintendo 64 games really well, so if you guys want to get a couple of those. Right, so with these two zip files here, what you guys actually want to do is get the original RetroArch first, double click on the zip file, and once it's open, you want to select these three files and simply drag and drop them on your Switch's SD card. I've already done it just to save time, but make sure you do it with this file first. Once this file is copied across, you can now delete it, and you want to do exactly the same thing with this file. Double click to open, select all the files, and simply drag and drop them on the root. Now once you do that, it will ask you to replace some of these files um, with the old ones. So just give this a few minutes just to copy across. As you can see, replace the files, make sure you click on it, and then it's going to start replacing. So once that is done, there is one more thing to do, and that is put our ROMs folder across. So we're going to right click, copy our ROMs folder, go onto our SD card, we're looking for the RetroArch folder, double click on that, and you can right click paste the ROMs folder anywhere in here. So that is literally it for the PC. Um, I won't bore you guys waiting for this to copy across, but now you can disconnect your SD card, put it back into your Nintendo Switch, boot into your custom firmware, and I will show you guys what to do next. Right, so back over on our Nintendo Switch, we just want to put our micro SD card back in, and now we want to boot into some kind of custom firmware. I will be using SXOS for this video, so I'm just going to put in the dongle, then my RCM jig, and I will boot into the custom firmware. So you guys should know, but hold volume up and then the power button at the same time, and then you will get the SXOS boot screen. Now you can let go, and we are going to select boot custom firmware. Okay, so now on the Nintendo Switch, we want to open up our album just so we can access the SXOS menu. Now we're just going to go over to Homebrew. Um, if you want to install it, you can install the NSP file on installer. Um, obviously it's different for every custom firmware, but with SXOS you just press A to install. Um, I'm just going to launch it off my Homebrew menu because it's a bit easier. So I'm just going to tap Homebrew and then just find it on here. So here is my one. I can see this is where my file is located. So I'm just going to press A to launch up RetroArch. 
Now when it launches up, you guys can already see there's a couple of differences than the normal version. We have frames down here. This is kind of like an FPS counter, I guess. Um, right now it's not really doing anything, it's just sort of counting up. But when you're in-game, um, it will actually go up and down depending on the game speed. We also have CPU overclock. Now this is the most interesting thing it comes with. And basically if you press A on this, it's going to give us a tons of different preferences we can select. Um, for our Nintendo Switch to run in. So we can use maximum performance, which is 1785 uh, MHz or MHZ. So we can actually enable that if we just press A on it. And you can see it switches it to current. So that is now running as our current. If we would switch it to stock, you'd see it go back on current with the stock performance. But let's just choose maximum for this video. I'm not gonna leave on maximum all the time. It could um, lower the battery life quite quickly and you might notice maybe a bit of overheating, not really overheating, but maybe a temperature increase. So let's just choose maximum performance for now. Let's just press on A. There it is, current clock is maximum. Now we need to press B to go back and we need to find our ROM. So I'm going to go to load content Let's go into our database. Let's go into the um, RetroArch folder. The ROMs folder should be somewhere here. Now let's test out my PlayStation 1 game. I did play this before and the sound was a bit laggy. So, so maybe it will be improved a bit um, with the maximum performance. So let's just press on A. Now we need to find the emulator. I believe it's this one right here. Yep, Sony PlayStation. Let's just press A to launch up the game. So here we are guys on max performance. Let's see if it actually makes a difference because I haven't actually got around to testing it yet. So let's just start up a quick match. The sound is actually running very well. Before, I think it was actually glitching a bit. The frames is on 3000. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'll have to find out. But let me just select a random character. Let's select this one right here. Right, so now we're in an actual match. Now before, this was actually a bit laggy. The sound was laggy as well. And right now, this actually seems to be running really well. Uh, maybe I'll make a video where I compare um, stock performance to high CPU. Um, but before, this was actually really bad. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear the sound as well. The sound is running very well. And yeah, this is actually really playable. I'm actually really impressed with this. So yeah, if you guys want to get RetroArch and play PS1 games a lot better, um, definitely use uh, maximum performance. Now, I'm not sure how much my battery life it's going to go down. I believe it was on 93%, so we'll see what it's on when I come out of this. Now, I would show some Nintendo 64 gameplay, but um, I know Nintendo like to claim their footage at the moment, so that's why I thought we should stick with a PS1 game. But I have had people saying this works very well with Nintendo 64 games as well. So if you had a Nintendo 64 game that was lagging, um, I would recommend trying max performance on that as well. Anyway, let me just exit out of this. Let's just exit back to the home menu because we know this works. And okay, so my battery went down 2% and that was about two minutes of gameplay. So maybe it does, I don't think. Now the console isn't too wrong, so it's not too bad. But anyway, that is pretty much it for this video. So if you guys want to get this, I definitely recommend it because it just makes games just a lot more playable. So if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.